What's up everybody, Dan Alice Racing 35 here with my incredibly messy desk. Um, this is my HPI Nitro RS4. <coughs> I'm doing some maintenance on it. Um, it hasn't run right for ever. Um, I think it's something to do with the carburetor. But, um, yeah, I think I need a slide carb or something on it. But anyways, um, I've had a few people ask me how the gas cars move without a... Um, a quote-unquote clutch um, and the motor is running and they don't have a torque converter <clears throat> so I am here to explain this is the motor from my HPI Nitro RS4 um, it's one of the first generation ones so I don't really know I think it's a point sixteen. Um, I'm not really up on the um, the whole um, yeah the whole lingo, I guess you could call it, of the 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 gas-powered RC cars. Um, I've only had like three or four in my life. Um, this one, the this being one of them. Uh, my T Max over there, um, and then I had a Duratrax Axis when I was like 14 or 15, and uh, I promptly dispatched of that with my crappy radio. I had a few Taba. Um, it was like the dual stick one where you steer with this, no, you throttle and then you steer with the other one. I do it with the other hand, but I can't exactly take my hand off the camera because I'm holding it. Um, anyways, uh, this is the engine motor, whatever the hell you want to call it. This is the carburetor. Um, it normally sits right there, um, only slightly less up because I have it removed. Um, I'll take it off again. But anyways, um, it, this engine is a two-stroke, as are most um, most uh, gas RC cars. Um, it's uh, got all the major components that a normal engine, uh, internal combustion engine, has. It has the cylinder head, which is where it compresses all the air and fuel. Um, this is actually the exhaust right here. Um, this right here is the exhaust pipe. comes out like that attaches on there and it comes out and blows it out there <clears throat> um, down in here I'm, I can't really take it apart because a couple of the screws are stripped um, and all that crap but um, down here of course it's got the crankshaft the piston goes up and down inside like that and it's got the crankshaft that spins like that which is in turn connected to this thing right here which is the flywheel which balances and harmonizes or whatever the hell you want to say the motor and keeps it from vibrating too much um, and then this is the clutch right here it's a centrifugal clutch um, you it's got the flywheel has these uh, little um, rods sticking out of it and when it turns it creates a pivot point as you can, I don't know if you can see but there's a little split there and it's held together by a spring and there's a little split right there this stupid iPod doesn't focus, but um, it's held together by a spring. So what happens is you put it, the motor, you pull the motor, and it spins that way. I'm doing the pull start, and it spins that way. So what happens is that the motor is spinning, if I can get it, the motor is spinning this way. And if I put this on right here, I'm just mocking it up. But what happens is, when it's on one of the little pegs, the centrifugal force from the motor spinning makes these splay out like this. And then when the motor revs down, the spring brings it back off the clutch bell. And we'll get to cl the clutch bell in a minute. But what happens is, when the RPMs increase, it gets heavier and heavier because it's centrifugal force. Of course, I can't say the friggin' word. It's one o'clock at night. I can't even say one o'clock at night. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit tired. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a little bit better of the split that you can see. But since the pivot point, since there's a, a rod going through it right there, and right there, when it spins that way, it's going to come apart there and there, and it's going to go and open up like this. You know, kind of like one of them things, like a crab claw, whatever, crab people... But what happens is, this is the clutch bell. It's got the teeth that drive the main um, gear. 
and that's the inside of the clutch bell. That fits, oh, that's the wrong way, but that fits nice and snug inside there. So you can picture this spinning like so. You know, you can picture this spinning with the motor, and the, well, the clutch would be spinning with the motor, and then when it splays out enough, it's going to make contact with the inside of the clutch bell. <clears throat> you can actually see it worn away in the middle where the spring is, but it's going to make contact with the inside of the clutch bell, and it's going to, because it's made of like a, you know, frictiony material, um, like a normal clutch in a normal stick shift car is. Um, it's going to make contact with the outside and spin it. So that's a five, six minute long explanation of how a centrifugal clutch on a gas powered remote control car works. Um, that is not how a snowmobile clutch or something on a big scale um, remote control car works. Um, I do not have one of those, therefore I don't know exactly a hundred bazillion percent. But anyways, clutch, remote control car, gas powered, you know the drill. <laughs> Bye.